the future is video. I absolutely believe that. And this module will really dig into how is video being, being used in schools today and possibilities for the future. Uh, we'll be looking at different video sites, uh, ways to use a webcam. Now, what's interesting is you have to special order a computer today not to have a webcam. So from a few years from now, everyone's going to have a webcam. And well, how could we use that for teaching and learning? And so that's part of what we're going to be covering in this module. Like we have to start with the giant of them all. I just heard that for every minute of the day, every minute, 24 hours of video is uploaded. Every minute on average, 24 hours of video. Wow. And it is a resource like none other. And the reason it's so big is because the people that created YouTube before Google bought it had figured out how to take really big files and compress them so they can upload and download quick quickly. And so that's why the technology is so amazing. Do you know that YouTube only started in 2005 and it's already at 24 hours every minute? It's, I can't, there's no words to describe it. So let's take a look. Now, unfortunately, in schools today, there are many, many schools that are still blocking YouTube, which I feel is very unfortunate because with shrinking budgets, we have a resource that used carefully could help teaching and learning. Now, we you're living under a rock if you don't realize that there's bad stuff that could be on YouTube. But on the flip side, there's really, really good stuff. And so we as educators need to be the filters between the good and the bad and help students to understand this. Because I'll tell you, living with teenagers, I know they go home and it's the Wild West. There's no filters. There's nothing to block them. And we need to help them make good choices about what they're looking at and, and so on and so forth. So if it's blocked, we're hiding. We can't hide. We really need to make sure that uh, we have access to uh, these potential resources. Now, it may be blocked in your school district for a completely different reason. It may be blocked because your network can't support it. Your bandwidth can't support it. That, that may be. But a lot of times it's just blanket covered and what I want to recommend is don't just log into YouTube while connected to your projector and start searching around. Find what you're looking for before class and then make sure it's safe and then go ahead and, and use it. What I'm going to do show you in this module is if you can't access YouTube at school, I'm going to show you how to convert off YouTube. So I'm at my house helping with homework. I'm not always that fresh with my algebra, so I might need some help. I got to tell you, there's a lot of deadly, boring math teachers. <gasps> sorry, whoops, sorry, math teachers, but there are. And they all seem to gravitate to YouTube, but I don't care. I can go in here and put in, I just take honestly, whatever the topic is, I put it into YouTube, and sometimes hundreds of people. Let's see, I put in solving, like you're looking in the upper right hand corner. I put in solving linear equations. I have the first one of 20 of 2,740 videos that are tagged solving linear equations. Now, I don't know if they all are solving linear equations or if it's somebody nude on a beach. I, as the adult, have to be the filter to check that out before I would show it to students. So we really need to remember that we, it, we have a very important role, everybody, in this world. So this is how we do homework at my house. Now, I also use YouTube. I don't only just consume off YouTube. I also upload and share things on YouTube. And uh, this is a, uh, a movie I recently created for my publisher. My publisher has all these different people in different departments, and they wanted to kind of get to know the author. And I made this, and then I thought, uh-oh, it's too big to email. So what am I going to do? Put it on YouTube. And then they can, and then all I do is send a little link. So very often during a session, I'll find people that are um, taking videos and then they'll upload them and so it's uh, that I use it. I not only consume, I add back. Okay, now the whole conversion thing. If you can't get to YouTube at school, you can convert from at home. So if you can access it at home, then you can convert using, I'm using Zamza right now. This is the, the best free online one that I, I'm using right now. 
but these constantly are changing. And so what you do, if you look in the bottom left corner for me, step one, see where it says, in purple it says the URL? You go out to YouTube and you find the link to the video that you want, and you click on that purple one, the URL. Paste it in that white box, and then step two, you want to convert your file. If you are on a Mac, you want to convert it to MOV. .mov. If you are on a Windows machine, you want to export it as WMV, William Mary Victor, WMV. So, and then the third step is put in your email. And it's going to email you the link when it's done. What I found is sometimes it comes back immediately. Sometimes it never comes back at all. I don't know why. I can't explain it. It's free. And so then step four, you convert it. And that's and then it goes through its conversion. Usually, I think it pops up and it tells you how much longer it's going to be. So Zamzar is one way. So if you have it blocked at school still, you can convert and then bring the file. Then the file, you'll have the native file. So you never have to rely on YouTube. Sometimes it's not the video you're showing on YouTube that might be offensive. It might be the ad advertising or the other videos that populate like when you're done. They, they pop up on the side recommendations to look at, those kind of things. So in this case, then you're, it doesn't matter. Sometimes you lose some quality. Um, sometimes it's not quite as clear, but that's what you can do if it is blocked. Now we have some alt alternates. I haven't found a school yet that blocks TeacherTube. TeacherTube is great. It has um, videos, most of them school related, but again, anybody can publish anything at any time. So you really still have to be that filter for students of all ages. Um, but this is what TeacherTube looks like. It's sometimes TeacherTube runs a little slow uh, versus YouTube. It's just a different um, way they're processing the videos and so on and so forth. But I really like the way they have channels. They have channels that focus you. See right in the, the across the top in the blue bar, they have channels that you can go in and drill down to specific channels. I think I'm in the history channel right now. So then you can you know, see what, what other history people have, are putting up on TeacherTube. This is one, I, I uploaded one of my son's projects, so if you want something to look at, search for Danny's Book Report, and you'll see Danny's Book Report. So it's a great place to upload um, appropriate resources. I like this group. This group's out of, uh, I think, the St. Louis area, and SchoolTube would like to help you, help your students publish their multimedia. And so this school, this group does a really nice job of production, but they have really good customer service and, and everything's great. But I really like this group for the contests. You see the blue bar across the top. They have these contests and they're all, to, it, they go all during the year. They have different start and stop dates. But like this one, I'm looking at one for DARE. And what is this? Rally Against Tobacco, um, an NSPA and an NMSA contest. Well, what's great about these is your students create, um, it, each, each contest has its own different rules and, and so on and so forth. Then your students create videos, you upload them, and the prizes are great. Flip video cams, digital cameras, uh, microphones, things like that. So um, I just wanted to point you to the contests that are available on school too. I like those. <gasps> Skype. I really don't think I could teach today without Skype. And it was interesting, just this week, I Skyped into a sixth grade classroom. And at first it was novel. Everybody had to come up and wave and do that. And, and they were talking about what like what I look like. And in the background behind me, I was in my kitchen. And, and they were looking at all the stuff behind me and asking questions. And they wanted to see my dog. And I had to get the computer down on the floor to see the dog. But what was interesting is after that kind of wore, wore off, they, they went back to their seats because they wanted to send me some things through Skype that they had been working on. They were blogging. They were working on Glogster, VoiceThread. This, it was a fantastic teacher that I wrote about in my last book, and it was great to like virtually Skype into their room. And what was supposed to be the focus of our, our Skype visit was I was going to show them the virtual manipulatives. And on the um, – oh, it, it, it's a fantastic site. And – I was supposed to be showing them that, but we got so distracted by everything else. What's great now is now we're connected, and we 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 are in um, they're in my contacts. I'm in theirs. So if I have a question appropriate for sixth grade, I can ask them. But we're going to actually be blogging back and forth. So I'm excited about that. I'm also writing another series of books with an international team, and the way we're doing it is through Skype, which is wow. 
I had my first Skype fight. Okay. Disagreement. No, it was, it was a, it was a big disagreement. And so we did it um, in Skype. But what's great is sometimes email just isn't enough. You want to make sure that you can see somebody's face and you can, you know, try to gauge what they're thinking. There's five reasons I love Skype. First, number one, bottom right hand corner, instant messaging. So here's Mike. I'm bugging him. I need to ask him something. So I send him an instant message. That's what you should do before you try do the call. Second thing, up in the upper, uh, across the top, you see the green call button. That's where you call. Computer to computer, anywhere in the world, it's free. Computer to a landline or a cell phone, there is a fee. So you can buy Skype credit if you want. You can Skype even if you don't have a webcam. All you need is a microphone, but it's more fun if you get to see the people. All right, so it's free. I like the instant messaging. I love the video chat. Another feature I love is that I can share big files right in Skype. I don't have to go out and come back, right and come back. Share them right within, within Skype. And the last thing, well, I have lots more, but the last thing I'll say is that I can share my screen with another group. So my plan was with the sixth graders, I was going to share my screen and show them the virtual manipulatives and something didn't work right. So we're not sure what happened there. And so I was going to kind of give them a walking tour of the website, but it didn't work. We're going to try again next week. Okay. I don't know how to pronounce this. I'm calling it kick, but I don't know for sure. And this is wild. You on your cell phone, if you have a smartphone with a data plan, you download the Kick application. So it sits on your cell phone. And then you go to your son daughter's soccer game and you click on the Kick app. And as long as you have a camera on your phone, it turns your cell phone into a video camera that broadcasts back to Kick.com. Quick, I don't know how to say it. There's no Q, U, I don't know. And so your husband's stuck at the office. He can still see the soccer game through the internet. Well, the same thing could happen if somebody gets in a fight in the hallway. Everybody could click on their kick app and it could be broadcast live. They can be saved and organized. So here, here's one. This is from the kick site. Here's another one. Somebody on the beach, but you can still see what's going on. And Ustream is similar, but a little bit different. Um, Ustream, anybody can broadcast and create their own channel their own, um, yeah, their own channels. It's like you have your own talk show. And I'll tell you, there's a lot of people with way more time on their hands than I have that just blah, 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 blah all day. But a lot of mainstream um, news outlets are also doing it. So it's it's very interesting, news stream. It, it, uh, years ago at a conference, this uh, gentleman, Coach Norm, as I've num come to Twitter with him, Coach Norm came up and he said, I'm here to news stream you. And, you know, you stand there and you try to use your context clues, and I had none. I'm like, really? And I just go, oh, okay, because I didn't know what else to say. And all of a sudden, Coach Norm sits down, takes his, his um, he had an external webcam, clips it on the back of the chair, and he said, okay, we're ready. There's uh, 20 people that have joined us, and they want to want to make sure that you wear your mic. And I'm like, what do you mean 20 people have joined us? So from the, he put it out on Twitter that I was about to present, and 20 other people came to join the conversation. It was wild. Uh, so most of my presentations are being recorded on Ustream, which is really interesting. They have a new look and feel. And entire conferences are being Ustreamed. This has become a problem, though, because some um, presenters don't want to be broadcast like that. And so, but it all takes is one person with a webcam or a phone to make it happen. So it's really become quite in in interesting issue. But sometimes it's not even that the presenter doesn't want, it's the bandwidth that, that because you're streaming video and other people are trying to be on their computers. So there can be some issues. All right. You know what? We are too serious most of the time. Let's have some fun. Bubble Joy is one of those things that, you know what? You just got to see it to believe it. Here's bubblejoy.com and you can create a Bubble Joy card. There I am. Ooh, not a very good picture of me. I put myself in a coffee mug. Whoop, there I'm a shark. Oh, let's go back. Here, I have a principal. This is how she uses it. If her students, she has a couple key ki kids that she's watching. If her students meet their behavior goals, they get to come to her office and record a bubble joy to their parents.
They pick the shark, the lion, the coffee cup, whatever you want, and they get to put their little face up near her webcam and shoot the video. They, she said it's completely changed these kids, and these parents are so excited to see their little kids, and just putting them in the little shark mouth gets them just so excited. Hello! Whatever works. We're all good there. Cameroid is very similar. You can't use Bubble Joy or Cameroid without a webcam, so don't even try. And here we can put ourselves in all different scenes. For example, I've always wanted to be on an etched sketch, and now I can. And so Bubble Joy, you save the movie and you email it to someone. And this one, you snap the picture and then you can send it to somebody. That's me and all those different things. There's me. Ooh, yeah, look at that. That's bad. Don't do this with middle school girls. It will ruin their self-esteem. All right, you always want to make a comic book. Now you can. <laughs> I love the ape. No, no, actually my favorite is the gnome because they actually have the blush already on there for you for the gnome. And uh, yeah, that's my face in the alien and Frankenstein. Mm -hmm. Have some fun. We deserve it. All right, Google Chat. It's very similar to Skype. And what you do is you can chat with people, but what's cool is you can do it right from your email now. And so yeah, I, very often I'll look at my email and it's like, oh, I don't want to sit and type, you know, a page email to this person. Why don't I just call him? And I can call him right from my computer. It, 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 be careful. At first, it totally freaks people out when their computer rings, like when, with Skype. But it is a great way. You're triaging your email. Okay, hold on. Let's just do a quick uh, Google chat. All right. As you can see, I'm passionate about the video. And the future is video. I have only picked out just a few of the video tools that are available to you. And we have to harness the power of video. So I'm going to leave a parting comment with you. If you're back to my beginning this and you're like, oh, YouTube is blocked in my school. I'm so mad. If that's your life, here's my comment. I don't feel in this day and age that you should be trusted to teach children if you can't be trusted to teach children using YouTube. So good luck in your adventure to use more video in the classroom. Thanks for joining me.